dress he hasn't worn before, but Jay Naps is ready for that ball. One of the powerhouses in the world. Jay Naps who does get that one all by himself. He's gonna make a play. Oh, and he gets the ball. Number four, Jay Naps though now will be aggressing onto the ball. Kronovi. Direct that in. This is Rival Week. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome one, welcome all to day four of Rival Week. I'm Unthink here in the PRL studio with none other than Karma Sia. Karma, how are you today? Hello, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Having a wonderful day indeed. We've got a fantastic day ahead of us here. A lot of great Rocket League to be played. If you are here, you are in the right place for Rocket League. Before we get going though, Miss Karma, let's talk a little bit about you. So we've had a we've had a little bit of history together. We've definitely uh we've worked together on a couple of things. We've talked on the talk back before, but tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Um gosh. I'm not sure. Uh, I play Rocket League. <laughs> I cast from time to time. I play in tournaments. I stream on Twitch. I uh, am a nerd. That's pretty much me. <laughs> I try and keep busy. Uh, I'm in school for um, med medical school. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rocket League takes up like most of my time. So. Very nice. Look at that, folks. We have a doctor in the casting, yeah, finally. That's, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> But she's got a PhD a in Rocket League. <laughs> PhD in Rocket League is a pretty nice thing to have. Um, gonna jump into the match in just a second here. Looks like we got all the players here. G2 taking on NRG. That's gonna be Garrett Firebrenner and Jacob bringing it on against Kronovi, JNAPS, and Rizzo. A quick shout out to all of the sponsors. We'll talk about more of them in just a second. We'll get into this one now. Game one, this will be a best of seven, and there will be three best of sevens potentially tonight. It is a best of threes of best of seven. So truly, we're talking about marathons. It is going to be quite an interesting evening for Rocket League. And we are in now to game one. That's Jacob. Yeah. Three best of sevens for these teams is a really long road. So it'll be interesting to see how they uh, kind of handle maybe adversity if they're shown and uh, well, NRG isn't waiting before they uh, take dominance off the beginning here. Well, it's a great start here. Jacob carrying through and a bit of an overextension on offense, but Rizzo playing from the line had some potential. There's just, it was a lot of speed coming in from Jacob. How do you, I mean, you pull that kind of momentum this early on. That's a great start to have in this match. Yeah, G2 just giving him too much space. I mean, you saw Jacob coming up the field there. He had time to go wide and basically take like a 1v1 shot and just put it on net in the top corner with a bunch of power. Jacob won't miss those if you give him that much space. Gene 2 needs to close the gap a little bit and put a little bit more pressure. He can't can't allow that much. But it's just the beginning. They've plenty of time to adapt here. Three best of seven, so <laughs> they've got plenty of time to adapt for sure. We're into the match now. Playing into the orange zone. One zero holds. Oh Rizzo oh. no! Oh my <laughs> goodness, that was a little unexpected. Yeah, really nice fake here by Rizzo. Instead of just hitting the ball mid, he takes his time, and Garrett kind of doesn't know what to do, ends up going towards the net, and Rizzo just banks it off of him. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. And coming in from the long spawn. Nice touch here to the center. Someone's given a call, and it's G2 on defense. Back over from NRG. And traded through. Rizzo, he's got the backboard. Will this be something successful? No, Jacob's going to clear that one back over to the line. Kronovi holds forward, though. The pressure's still here. And fire. He's got Jacob now. This is set up here. Two defenders back, though. Kronovi and Rizzo. Rizzo picking up where Kronovi leaves off. That's great communication. Yeah, that was a really great save by uh, Kronovi there. And good job by Rizzo not overcommitting. So they were able to get the clear to JNAPS and kind of relieve the pressure there for a little bit. 
back. Nobody's got one here on the perimeter again. We'll have a second shot at this one. Jacobs pushed back out and has to force on the rotate. That's Rizzo. Oh, almost to the woodwork, but we'll clear that one through. That's 2-1. Yeah, Fire just with a bad touch here. He's trying to boom that, I'm assuming, left center for Jacob, who was over on that side, but ends up just hitting the bottom of his car, which causes the ball to just drop where it is. And Rizzo is just sitting there waiting for it. Bit unfortunate there for Fire. Does that come down to, like, hitbox orientation issue, or, you know, what's the what's the issue in getting up in the air like that? Yeah, so Jacob was um, on the far left side of the field, which is, like, what you do in that situation is you want to hit it hard across the field so Jacob can get a redirect on that. So Fire is trying to get it to hit the very front hitbox of the octane, which powers the ball. And if you mess it up just slightly like that, it hits the bottom of the car and um, just drops the way it does, unfortunately. We've got j -Nabs coming back in for the attack. This is a chance at the top of the box. Kronovi Dent's a little bit tied up with the shoelaces. There's one more chance to play this through. The full clear here from NRG now. Garrett G, the whole play. This is looking good, almost, but just a little bit too far behind the ball for the touch. And that's going to hold on. Now we are at the half, and 2-1 will play through. Still a very close matchup. Garrett, and there's no one there to finish that one off. Rizzo close, but no dice. That's 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, Rizzo just kind of caught in a bad position there. Garrett is so fast to the ball that Rizzo didn't have a chance to go contest it. And Garrett places it perfectly, top corner, 60 miles an hour. It's really hard to save that from Rizzo's position. Jay Naps flying from a nice start here off the faceoff, but that'll be denied by Fireburner. And Kenobi's got another shot again at this one, but that's a little bit light and three defenders sitting behind it. That is going nowhere fast. Kenobi's bumping to the corner. He's going to play this one back. He's waiting for boost. Jams picked up the line boost there at the midfield. That's going to force a full rotation there for Kronovi. Oh, Jacobs bumped a little bit of pressure here on the line. This could be a potential now for Kronovi to get forward, but he's going to miss the play in the air, and Fireburner has a chance at contention. And Jacob passing back center. This is two now. JNFs has got a shot. He's going to play this one wide, but he doesn't really have a whole lot of control over the play. Oh, my oh. goodness. <laughs> but Rizzo <laughs> certainly does. I mean, out the sidewall, straight in the net. My goodness. Sometimes the things he does is just, it's like, how do you even do that? <laughs> he just comes off the sidewall, pre-spins, and hits it perfectly with the corner of his car. Okay, Rizzo. Calm down. Rizzo? It's only game one. <laughs> Rizzo popping off hard. And then we've got Jacob in again from the faceoff. They don't waste any time. Going back into the play here. G2 holding pretty strong. Coming in now from the second half of the game. A bit of a shift in terms of momentum. Jacob. Coming in as the wild card, trying to make the final touch on the play, but it'll be Kronovi on the perimeter with another shot at this one. Garrett and Fireburner lining up, forcing the angle and making a pass over to JNAPS to get this one back away. Garrett, Fireburner coming in now. Kronovi's going to change the ball, but this is a big chance here for NRG. They see the opening and Jacob making the finish. It's a bit of a mistake there from Kronovi and fully exploited by NRG. Yeah, I think Kronovi is trying to dump that into the corner. Must have just hit it wrong, but G2 is, seems like they need to try and find each other more on the defensive half. They're kind of just clearing the ball to NRG and hoping to counter. And when you play that ping pong style against a really good team like NRG, typically they're going to end up punishing, for it, punishing you for it long term. So I'd like to see G2 try and uh, find each other more on the defensive half to work on clearing the ball just like that. It helps, like, transition to offensive pressure. Oh, okay. Kronovi! Hey, that looked like it was going to be a defensive clear, but Kronovi can smell it in the water and goes for the shot. Yeah, I, I don't know how to describe that one. NA defense, I guess? That was kind of a poodle. <laughs> so. <laughs> I mean, Garrett was definitely close to the play, just a few pixels off to make the stop, but also just Kronovi's awareness on what he's got in terms of the challenge there. That paid off. Real big for them with 30 oh. seconds. Oh, so almost. And already Jacob, who has six shots on goal, is not giving up any ground just yet. As we back in now, Fireburner takes away the boost at the back line. It'll be Jacob now moving in, but he's got a little bit of lost control. And here comes Kronovi. Challenge into the line, traded again. A little bit of the ping pong, as Karma mentioned. And with eight seconds left, this will be one more shot here for NRG to hold up and play it out in game one. G2 
can close this one out. It's gonna be no close. This one's off the back. This is a bit dangerous here. It's G2 open. doesn't make the level. Oh, it's not done. Jacob, Rizzo, looks like you're ready to make the stop here, but Jacob's got it off the ground and it's that it will be it. G2, it's a game one, but <laughs> this was certainly not an easy one for either side. And G2 putting forward a lot of offense here towards the second half of the match. Yeah, it seems like NRG, you know, so as I was talking about G2 clearing the ball, they kind of are just clearing it. Uh, NRG is one of those teams where they always seem to pass to each other on the defensive side. And mm -hmm. whenever there's a clear, um, oops, get it ready. Uh, it seems like they're always on the end of it. But G2 had, especially Rizzo, was just capitalizing on NRG's mistakes. It felt like Rizzo was a big part of kind of shaking up the G2 play and being extremely aggressive, especially talking about those shots coming in from his pressure at the midfield. Um, something that kind of pushed G2 off, it was just the, how aggressive Jacob was and how he was almost, he really does play kind of weird. And there was a lot of like wild card moments there where he took advantage of that. Uh, but G2 was able to close that down in the last half of the, or the second half of the game. It just seemed like it was yeah. um, a little bit complicated for them to handle him here. And I'm wondering if Jacob can be utilized in game two. Yeah, it seemed like every mistake Rizzo capitalized on. He intercepted the pass on the defense. He scored on that. He scored that Fireburner's missed touch at, in the corner there. And then he got that crazy one off the wall. So if yeah. Rizzo keeps scoring on literally every mistake the energy makes, it's going to be a tough series for them. Well, small mistakes making big differences here in game two. We're hopping right into G2 and NRG. And if you are just getting here, Welcome to the best Rocket League of the week. By my opinion, of course, if you've been catching up with Rival Week, do not forget to catch us here. We're here at the same time, same place. And back in, that'll be Kronovi. A nice start there, a kiss off the ceiling. It's gonna close this one out 1-0. Yeah, again, Rizzo is just the playmaker for this team right now. Picks it off, puts it perfectly into the top corner of the field there where the ball just drops straight down. And that's easy pickings for Kronovi there. Is uh, Rizzo normally kind of the fulcrum, the center of the play when we're talking about the G2 chemistry? It's hard to say. Sometimes he is. Uh, sorry, thought there was going to be a goal there. Um, <laughs> when they're on, I feel like Rizzo is their playmaker, and J. Neps and Kenobi usually usually split the scoring. More so J. Neps if he had to pick a score, but oh boy. Oh my goodness. Hold on. We'll talk That's about that. That's not what you want to see. Oh man, Garrett dropped that? Is it just JNAB's got there a second late and Fireburner has the angle of the day? I can't believe he just took that goal to goal. What a pinch. What a pinch. We're in That's now third. I'm sure. It was 100% calculated TI 83s are go. Unless you were going after 98 and it's TI 84s. Rizzo got the attack in for Kronobi. Ooh, that's a nice yeah, there, pressure coming in. Garrett's got it. I believe. Oh, so close. Didn't quite get high enough on the ball there. Good try. Could have been low on boost. Um, G2 is like doing a really good job. If you notice, the both of these teams do a nice job of when the ball is on the sideboard, of mm -hmm. getting their car behind it instead of hitting it right off the back wall, which most teams are good defending now, is getting it mid and keeping that passing between each other going. So uh, that's something to notice if you're looking at like higher levels of play. Watch how they always, pretty much always try and hit the ball to each other and keep possession instead of just giving it away. Even from the pinch, they've almost got it in control here. Fireburner taking advantage. Jacob on target. Oh nice. And exactly as you're talking about there, you are starting to see a lot more of that controlled passing play. I think that's a huge shift from what we're talking about from like even season one Rocket League though. Everything has definitely gotten a lot more precise and those finesse touches and those mm -hmm. key touches coming in from the sidelines. Those are going to be key. Another stop here from JNAPS. Fireburner is at the 50. He's going to hold control on this one, play it through, but now it'll be time for G2. He got this one off the backboard, disrupted again. It, at a certain speed, the defense is forced to play those backboard passes, and it does seem like that they're allowing them a little bit more control for G2 to play at the midfield and build that pressure up a bit. Yeah, G2 is really good at playing midfield and cutting off those passes when they get a lot of pressure. Um, what they like to do is almost boost Star V. Rizzo is really good at just getting into your zone and taking all the boosts, and because they're so fast and so good at reading the ball, they're insanely good at keeping pressure, but 
it's tough for them against NRG as we see a nice passing play here because NRG is so good at what they do that it's kind of like a battle for who can create the most pressure and have most ball possession during the game. Oh, is that one? Is it all three players involved in the play here? Rizzo's going to complete that one. That's one off the side. And then JNAP's here for a touch. Garrett actually was going for the attempt on the clear. Rizzo's there for the finish. That is a great style to have there. G2's taking advantage. Yeah, JNAP's had a nice fake there following the ball, which baited Garrett out into trying to respect the shot and go for the save. But when JNAP's didn't hit it, it went right by Garrett and Rizzo, the man of the hour so far, finishing it off. When you're in that last second moment there, is that the consideration you have walking into the play? Or is that like, as I'm rolling through, I'm going to move my hitbox here to play the fake? Um, it could be like, I'm just going to follow this. Then he realizes he doesn't have it and calls it out. And Rizzo's just there automatically in case he misses anyway. Uh, it could be a calm thing as well. It kind of depends. Mm -hmm. Jacob is off the backboard. Another touch from Jacob. He's going to carry that one through to himself. Rizzo's on the stop again. Rizzo being at the center of a uh -oh. lot of this motion here. Oh, from the line. That's not enough there. That's going to be Garrett G making the attempt there on the woodwork. And Kronovi now, this is a pass forward and a chance. He holds on to that. That's good aerial control and almost. That was the level you need there to get in and force that one into the top corner. But it's just not enough to make sense of the play. Kronovi in. Again, Rizzo on the attack. This is you just see it over and over again. They just they place it up, mm -hmm. they set center, and then they it's it seems to be Rizzo and Kronovi being the primary placement for moving those in. Yeah, I mean, all this was started from about 30 seconds ago. Rizzo was last man on defense, and he made a quick decision to challenge Fireburner at mid, won the 50-50 and dumped it into Energy's half. All that pressure for the last oh. minute. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> 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 I can't say anything. Or they score. <laughs> Welcome to Rocket League, where the action moves literally so fast, you don't have time to talk about the last five seconds because the next five is just as exciting. It looked like the ball was going to be placed out, but a full crash comes in from the offense, and they're able to clear that in for 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, that was a little bit of a lackluster defense from G2 there. That was hard. I think it went off the crossbar and down, which is one of the hardest mm -hmm. shots to read because you jump to protect the top of the net, but the ball hits the crossbar, you're not that high, and then it goes down, and you can't catch it, so... It's tough to save those. Rizzo. You've got here for Kenobi. That's a good touch here to come in. But Garrett is going to disrupt, and there's a play forward from JNAP, but he's a little too slow to it. And Jacob's going to play that one through again. Here come the passes now. G2 setting up again. The pressure they've been building up lately. This is coming down with eight seconds. This will be the last moments. G2 in advantage. NRG. Can they complete? This is going to possibly come down to overtime. Last second moments here, and that will drop overtime here. What are the considerations coming in from the short spawn like this? Um, a short spawn? What do you mean? Uh, from in from the uh, from the face off. Oh, oh. Um. Yeah. Well, whenever there's like an overtime, sometimes you consider, you know, running a kickoff play, whether you want to purposely lose the kickoff or win it to a certain side. Um, mm -hmm. Didn't look like we saw any of that here, but Jacob is especially notorious fans. You see a really nice pass. Oh my gosh. Oh. Wow. JNAPS. He's got a chance now here on the perimeter, but he's going to lose control of the play. Fireburner can carry this one through. He's got Garrett G waiting around the box, but Fireburner is going to lose control and force the rotate. We've got Jacob. He sets this one up now. JNAPS and Kronovi. This is the backboard. This is going to be potential. Garrett G is forced here to make the clear, and it's a question now is oh, if no. Fireburner gets to it, that's going to be big. He's got a chance. Can he make the completion? But once again, they see the ball and they move to the play and they just swarm as quickly as possible. This is coming down to almost, it feels like it's coming down to like a two touch kind of play. Like you're going to have to make the pass extremely quickly because both sides are quickly shutting this down. Oh! oh. Jacob, no. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob had the save. He just misreads it a tiny bit off the wall here. Unfortunate, but Kronovi, punishing. Um, NRG looked dangerous there. That's a big goal for G2, in my opinion. NRG had passing plays on the offensive side, and um, G2 is able to, it, like, it seems like NRG is controlling the pace of the game. They have more shots. I mean, you mm -hmm. see JNAPS has eight saves and no shots. Uh, I don't know how many shots Fireburner had because he left, but it seemed, it seemed like NRG was in control of the game, but G2 just seems to 
weather the storm and kind of score when they need to, maybe counter a bit, and ends up getting the two wins, even though they looked like the less dominant team in the two games. And it did feel like on offense, uh, Cronovi and Rizzo were both definitely up there, but they kind of shifted uh, the dynamic towards Cronovi, or maybe he just had more opportunities set up in his favor. Uh, it, it was a lot of great play there, and Jane Haps is just an absolute animal in front of the goal here. I can't believe eight saves. We just, we really don't see that level that often. No, it's especially Jane Haps too. Jane Haps, when you think of him, you more think of like a scorer or a mm -hmm. playmaker, and to see him coming up with the eight saves and that he's not only just a scorer, he's a very versatile player and can just fit the role that's needed. So considerations coming into this one, this is a pretty strong start here for G2. They've got to be feeling a lot of positivity rolling into this. This is still a very early part of the first set. And we're not even, we're still talking about the first right. best of seven right safe. now. Yeah, I mean, yep. you're thinking about this as in our, I mean, how easy is it to reset within a set thinking about, I have two more to consider? Uh, I mean, I don't think you're thinking about that at the time. You're thinking, you know, mm -hmm. on a set basis, you want to understand, like you're trying to figure out, okay, what's G2 doing, G2 doing, G2 doing. What's G2 doing that <laughs> is working against us? And for me, it's kind of like the counter goals and they're just capitalizing off the mistakes. So if NRG can just tighten up um, and maybe try and force G2 to like put the pressure on G2's defense and force them to not double commit. G2 likes to double commit a lot on defense. And if you can put G2 under that pressure, maybe NRG can force them to crack and kind of swing momentum back on their side. But at least for me as a player, I don't usually think, well, oh, we have another series after this, or oh, we have two right. series after this. You're kind of trying to understand what you need to fix now in order to come back in this one. You want to think about that stuff after the series is over. If you okay. know. So it's more like short-term adjustments for now, and then as mm -hmm. the series you start, do you, do you do a full reset? Do you just feel like, hey, I can slow down now. It's time to start all over again. I mean, how much, do, in terms of a best of seven versus maybe a best of five, uh, how much more wear is there really on you as a player? Uh, best of sevens versus best of five. I mean, it's just a little bit um, more taxing on you mentally because of just the extra games. And just the, it's longer overall. The progression of the series are longer overall. Um, so there's that element to it. Maybe fatigue, but I think that these guys play long enough to where it's not really that much of a factor well we are jumping into game number three g2 taking on nrg g2 being up two currently in the series the first series of best of seven we potentially have two more here it is a best of threes of best of sevens here for the format if you are just joining us welcome to rival week we are here on day four we're kicking it off here with a North American showdown. It's going to be Jacob. Oh, challenges uh -oh. beats Rizzo here on this one. This is potential. They can get this one off the backboard, but JNAPS will deny. Garrett's in. That's close. JNAPS making the play and getting there at a split second's notice. It'll be Rizzo here for the clear. Already a lot of pressure building here from NRG. Mm -hmm. Rizzo with a big dunk right there. Actually, the ball was going into the G2 half. I think they were low on boost. So this allows G2 to kind of Reset, keep the offensive pressure on the JNAPS. Ooh. Almost puts one in under the bar. Jacob, he's going to hold control on that one after making a double touch to the wall. And that demo sets up Rizzo's going to take out Fireburner. This is a potential here for a very short power play, but being behind the midfield aren't able to really capitalize on it other than taking a little bit of advantage. The midfield boost, it's in now, almost. Rizzo will deny Fireburner coming in very close on that one. Honestly, thought it was coming in, but Rizzo is just a demon when it talks about coming back on the line, especially in this series that we've seen so far. Yeah, Rizzo is great on defense, probably one of the best defenders in, in my opinion, in North America. He's really underrated. And he also does, if you watch him on offense, he's always in the corner sealing their boost as well. He does such unique things for a team that don't really show up on the scoreboard like bumping in net, going for the boost steals, and then rotating back just when he needs to on defense. And he's doing it all really well right now as he bumps Fireburner, steals his boost at mid. And uh, it's nice to see. He's a unique player for sure. Certainly showing himself off in this series so far. 
And we are still scoreless. And if you're, if you're not looking at the screen, I guess that's the one thing you'd want to know right now. We're about 15 seconds here from the half. Fire burner. Close, but there is a deny coming in. He's forced to play a really interesting angle there from the air roll. And they'll be resetting here on top of the box. Jacob. Novi. Oh, that's a back pass here. Playing through. That could have been a bit dangerous. Could have been punished for that one. Rizzo's going to take out Garrett and force a rotation here back from Jacob and Fireburner. It feels like we're looking at a bit more of a defensively minded G2 um, from the last couple. And I don't know if that comes into they can be a little bit more relaxed coming into, you know, having a 2-0 advantage here so far. Or if it's simply they're, they're adjusting now to the NRG play. It looks like NRG is just applying the pressure now and like I said, G2 likes to double commit a lot. Um, mm -hmm. When you see them playing tournaments and scrimmages, usually they're double committing a lot of defense. If you can get them to double commit at the wrong time and punish them for it, that's when you can really kind of expose G2's defense, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, so with energy putting on all this pressure, it forces a lot of those double commits. So hopefully try and see G2 to try and do what they do best keep boost starving energy, keep the pressure up on offense, and eventually maybe they'll crack. Rizzo's carrying through away from the initial play from JNAPS. The Fireburner holding on, but the control here now handed over to Garrett. Once again, playing those two touches and move style of play. Kronovi, we got this on the line. Jacob's going to make a touch for this one forward, and he's got Garrett playing at the midfield. Will there be anyone to play up behind? It looks like G2 has two to push into it. Again, you're, you are seeing a lot of those resources being allocated to the play. Grenovi and for Rizzo. This is backboard play. Jacob's going to be forced to react, and they've got to clear out to the wing with a minute left. It comes down to a very potential here. The one mistake is going to make a huge difference here as we get into this game. NRG seems to just be missing that third touch. They usually have the one-two pass. And usually mm -hmm. you want to follow that pass up if it's not a shot. And they seem to just be missing that right now. I don't know if it's because of what G2 are doing in terms of boost stealing or bumping, because it's hard to see on the auto cam. But uh, it looks like uh, energy are just kind of missing that extra touch that they need to really give themselves a good scoring opportunity right now. It could also be G2 is great defense as well. Holding on with 20 seconds. JNAP's in control. He plays this one up. This is going to be a challenge here for the swing ball. Here is Fireburner making a touch at the stray one. And this is a play forward again. 10 seconds. This is NRG in advantage here for the blue zone right now. It's in Jacob. Not making the touch. That's a good fake here. Garrett, two defenders in. Almost the play with the Kronovi JNAP's Ooh. curtain. Come oh, no. Unbelievable Fireburner's buzzer beater play. Look at it. Jacob looks like he's going to get the touch. Rizzo plays it through. And both oh, Garrett man. and Fireburner forced to play away from Kronovi. That's amazing. Yeah, Energy actually double commits on offense and gets the goal. Oh. You don't see that too often. Uh, <laughs> incredible placement from Fireburner there to be like under Kronovi because Garrett was above. So Kronovi really didn't have an option. Um, just ended up hitting it, unfortunately, right into Fireburner, and uh, they steal game three. I mean, that was such a tightly contested defensive move there. Oh. It seemed like it seemed like G2 was going to make the dub. <laughs> Oopsie daisies. <laughs> a little, little too used to that, right? <laughs> yeah, my bad voice. I'm not there I'm yet. Here. I'm just a spectator. Yeah. I'm just a spectator. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when we get G2 Karma, we'll certainly see that as an interesting one for the day. But here we're jumping into game four and 2-1. We're going to be playing through now. Still advantage for G2. And NRG, they put up an amazing stop there at the buzzer beater. And that is absolutely phenomenal here to come in for Fireburner now. We're jumping in. 15 seconds here off the faceoff. It's back in for the pressure on G2. Going for the back pass. This is Jacob's advantage. Got it off the line again here, forcing the defender to play it off of the backboard. Garrett keeping a little bit of pressure here. It doesn't seem like the NRG is really attacking the ball from that position, but they are maintaining pressure and starting to move in from the midfield. Yeah, it seems like right now they're just kind of picking the ball into G2's half, boost stealing and out rotating them right now. And look for when that happens, look for Jacob to do Jacob things in that situation. <laughs> when the other team has low boost, he likes to have a lot. He sits on the back wall, he sits on the ceiling, and he gets some crazy pass off that you're not expecting. And we, we talked a bit about Jacob things uh, before the stream actually started, but he is definitely 
of a wild card if we're talking about what NRG is putting up right now. And that's definitely something that G2 is going to have to worry about here is Rizzo almost getting one to himself. That would have been a very interesting play to finish off there. The defense is able to play back in time. Rizzo unable to get the finishing touch. And Garrett G here for fire. Fireburner's got a touch up here to Jacob, who's got the midfield, and JNAPS is going to hold control. And Kenobi, he may be able to play this one through if Rizzo's going to play from the midfield and see how this one formulates. And Garrett G has the chance. This one's coming a little bit. Oh! Defense is a little bit taken aback there. I'm not sure they were expecting the long shot. I think JNAPS had this in backflip, I think. Oh. I, he's on the yeah. screen there. He's just out of the shot, but he had the save. I was expecting Garrett to hit that down towards mid, so maybe he was caught off. He had Fireburner at midfield there for a shot. Instead, of, I think he expected the ball to hit the ceiling, and because it didn't, just kind of flinged it towards the offensive side. And I get fortunate there with a little bit of a JNAPS mistake. It looked like he was going in for a backflip, potentially even a half flip, but it did fail through, and he saw that it didn't hit the ceiling. And they've got another coming in for the comeback here. It's going to be another check on the box, all three in. Jacob will take the demo. Here's Fireburner in for the cherry picking position. Almost here. Counter plays looking real good. JNAPS, though. Oh, they're going to deny that completely. Instead of allowing the momentum to go to the top of the box, they're going to go ahead and shut that down. This will be JNAPS on the attack. That was a very close counter play, though. It looked like NRG is going to try to make a little bit of motion forward. Yeah, you saw Jacob get the demo in the corner which would mm -hmm. immediately is like, okay, we're one up. You want to start the offensive counter, but unable to Put that away. Oh my. Wow. Jeez, that was so close to working. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, Kenobi there at the last second though is going to deny the play. Rizzo backs up. Looks like they picked up the boost there for that one. And Jacob, we've got a touch forward. This is Garrett G. And so that's in center, but it's a good pass here to Rizzo and Kenobi working it together. The question now is NRG going to attempt to disrupt or are they going to play it safe and see how this one comes through? Oh, Rizzo. Rizzo, oh, that's good aerial control. Just overall, the finesse touches coming in from Rizzo in the air have been extremely dangerous to NRG. Yeah, Rizzo's getting some really good dunks this series that just relieve pressure or keep pressure. Um, there are things that you don't necessarily notice, but it leads to really good things. Mm -hmm. And hopefully Rizzo can keep making those good decisions, keep going for those dunks that he needs to and winning them. It's really important for G2. Uh -oh. Holding on, this is an offensive attack, but the miss in the air is unfortunate there, and it's going to be a back away here from Jacob. Oh, Garrett and Jacob. Okay, that's a nice drop there, but there's not a third man. We talked about this last game. Oh we're struggling for that, that's and that's on, the right? counter. That, that's, that's a game of billiards here, folks. That's 1-1. One, one. Plays up from way back, but a great angle to finish. Yep, G2 winning the, the dunks and um, catching NRG out of rotation there. Mm -hmm. I think that's their third out of rotation, like pinch goal that they've scored this series. So as long as they keep doing that, getting those kind of like, not lucky, but, um, you know, fortunate goals, those are really helpful when you're playing such a good team, like NRG. Garrett takes oh, out, that's a great attack. Look at that. That was yeah. Garrett taking a demo away from that one. And then Fireburner is set up for success. Yeah, JNUPS got demoed, I'm not sure by who, and that caused a rotation mistake when Rizzo missed the clear. JNUPS went for boost instead of going for net. Probably wasn't expecting a shot to come on, and NRG finally breaks the uh, defensive wall that G2 has been having like the past two games. Finally get over that one goal per game mark for them. One minute remaining. G2 now down here in the match, but up in the series currently. And that's midfield oh pressure. Holding here from NRG, who has the potential carrot. Oh, Grizzo, that's very dangerous water to be dribbling in now. And that's going to be taken advantage of. Fireburner, going to rack that one in here. One, three, NRG, they're going to put up a two-point cushion. Yeah, a bit of a missed touch from Rizzo there. Gets dunked and um, couldn't quite save it. I think that was Kronovi on the wall. It was a really mm. awkward position for everyone because there's kind of like a messed up play at midfield before that. And uh, unfortunate for G2 there, couldn't quite uh, reset after that tiny mistake. Well, 30 seconds is a real slim amount of time here to be working with a two point deficit, but it's going to be G2's chance if they can pull this off. Fireburner on target, JNAPS 
Make a nice stop here. He turns this one forward. That's looking good now. If Rizzo can make the finish, he's almost there, but it's just a second behind. And Garrett will play the clear at this far, point. Then. They can play a bit more conservative. I feel like NRG can simply play pressure from the midfield. They don't have to overcommit at this point. Yeah, if you're up 3-1 with either one or two minutes to go, it's really your game to lose um, in terms of like the level that these guys play as they get... Oh, just kidding. I thought that was a goal <laughs> from Garrett, but... Maybe he didn't want to watch the replay, so... Um, but when you're up 3-1 in a series like that, it's really your series to lose. And so this is 2-2 going into game five, correct? Yes, yeah, this will be 2-2 going into game five of this best of seven. So the winner of the next one will have, by my math, and by all of North America's math, uh, they will have the match point potential. Um, this is going to be a pretty difficult one to come into. So if, you, if you're if you rolling through this one as NRG, you've got a little bit of momentum coming out of this last game. You've had Fireburner, who's been playing extremely well on the offense out of this last one. Um, G2 didn't have the luck on their side this game. And I and it did feel like that they weren't quite utilizing. Like We saw a lot more utilization of Rizzo on offense in the last couple mm -hmm. of matches where they were successful. And we I don't know if we saw as, enough of that out of this last game. Yeah, I think it was just the NRG pressure. Uh, I hate to keep bringing it up, but no, when, no. when you're dealing with um, a lot of pressure like that, you really need to find your teammates when you're clearing the ball. Mm -hmm. And um, when G2 is under a lot of pressure, again, those double commits can happen, and that doesn't allow you to get the pass you need to to your teammate because two of you are on the ball. So um, G2 kind of needs to clean up the defense a little bit, see if they can find their teammates and transition to offense a little bit better than what they were doing. We're going to kick this one off now. Game five, and already a stop here from G2, almost getting the pressure play in from NRG. And that's Jacob. We've got a setup here off of the backboard. It's forcing the defense through. Kenobi's going to carry away where JNAPS leaves off. It's a little bit wide of target, but I think they're just trying to make the clear for that one. Garrett in for Kenobi. We got to play forward now. He's working in with Rizzo, and Fireburner is going to see the chance and challenge. Uh, you know, it really does feel uh, like when you're playing against Fireburner, that it's like if you don't get the play off, he wins those challenges. Like he just has extremely good control when he's coming with those kind of plays. I've never seen Fireburner lose a 50 50. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if, <laughs> if you're ever going up against Fire and you see him up and it's close, assume that he's going to win because I've never seen him lose one. And he just wins one again right there. And, yeah. oh, just missed Garrett at mid. He's just insanely good at positioning his car for the 50-50s. I don't know if it's because he plays with such a close camera or what. He just wins another one. Um, he just, I thought it was the Batmobile, but he's winning it with the Octane now, too. So it's clearly something he's doing. <clears throat> King of the hitbox does remain here in a minute and 30 seconds. Give me Fireburner. He's carrying through. Kenobi sees this one. He's forced on the play. That's going to be an advantage here for Kenobi. Looking good. Oh, the pinch completely stalled. They can hold on here. G2 is calling, but will they make the answer? Garrett. He's got to pass Kenobi. Oh, it's a bit dangerous. Kenobi can play it just wide, though. It's very lucky. If Garrett had a little bit of control just to the left, that would have been all ends meet there. Garrett in almost. And that's a finish. It looked like so JNAP puts a body in front of it but it just wasn't enough to hold on. Then there's a double commit in from NRG. Sorry about my phone. Um, <laughs> it's my grandma's landline and they do exist in 2017, everyone. I um, don't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, G2 losing a 50-50 there, unfortunate. But uh, Fire was waiting and expecting the 50-50 win anyway. It just so happens Garrett was there too. We are in 1-0 territory here with NRG, and it's feeling okay right now. They come in off of a little bit of a mistake on the offense right now. That's JNAP. Oh, Jacob bumping it just lightly over JNAP's Rizzo in for an attack. He's got Kenobi at the top of the box. But it's going to be Garrett G settling the score here. JNAP's in. Kenobi almost. It's a great deny there. Jacob again being in control of the disruptive play. Oh, and on target, JNAP's is again forced to deal with this Jacob pressure. This is a very, very fast paced game at the moment right now. And it just seems like any small move in the box is going to be the end of either team coming in for a goal attempt. Yeah, do you like to see G2 go for some bumps maybe to throw NRG's rotation off? Or mm -hmm. um, JNAPS and Kronovi are really good at getting in those bumps. Uh, NRG's known for bumping and Rizzo as well. So 
maybe if G2 can try and throw a wrench into these NRG rotations right now, because it looks like they've figured it out since the first two games and are really in sync. And um, maybe it would benefit G2 to try and throw it off a little bit, even though you don't get a demo. Sometimes going for a bump is just as beneficial. JNF is going to win the play over Fireburner, but they're going to hold on to possession right now. Rizzo, that's a nice stop on the line. Rizzo's not done, though. He's got the pressure in the box. That's all. Oh, no, Kronobi! No. Oh, that bottom 90 was almost there, but the corner has been denied. But Rizzo's control on the finesse touch in the box there, that set them up for greatness. Not like this. Kronobi missed an open net. Yeah, Rizzo had a really nice dunk there to set him up and j maybe just rushed it a little bit, thinking a defender was going to be coming in. He did have time, and Rizzo had the finish there, a bit unfortunate there from Crow. Well, the pressure is on. We're looking at a G2 who is very save-heavy this match, not so much on shots on goal. They've got seven total saves sitting in there between Kronobi and JNaps. And that definitely speaks to the NRG pressure that has been continuous throughout this entire series, especially right now, if we're looking at these very low scoring points here, they hold at that midfield and hold such control. They're forcing G2 into a little bit more risky clears. That's Kronovi. Well, Rizzo's going to have to back away from the play here because the Fireburner's already set up on the perimeter. Kronovi dropping it in again. I don't think the pressure's done yet here. G2, they like to put this one into overtime oh. potential right now. And Garrett's going to keep that one out to the line. Rizzo, Kronovi, looking and waiting. They're just playing it a There's little bit slow. They, they can get, but can they get between the passes at this point, or is a demo oh. going to be what separates? Well, that was it right there. Rizzo got the yeah. demo Fireburner. They had the pass play, and unfortunately, the shot just went a bit too high. Maybe they can get something going here in the last second, but it's going to take a Rizzo touch here. Nope, that's shut down. Oh. The dream certainly was there for G2. They had the chances, but they weren't able to make the finishing execution. And that's NRG. Wow. This has been a big shift in the series, to say the least. Um, I'm very surprised that uh, the scoreline is coming this close. Um, but at the same time, I'm also seeing a lot of really great play as they start shifting. We're starting to see uh, them weighing down G2 a little bit. And NRG is definitely taking uh, a pretty strong advantage when managing that midfield point. Yeah, NRG seems to have figured out the rotations, which seemed to kind of be lacking in the first two games. Uh, Fireburner said he didn't have his snacks. I don't know if that was serious or not, but maybe <laughs> he's got like protein bars that he's whipping out right now, and that's what's helping uh, propel the rotations for him or something. But whatever he did, it's working because NRG hasn't dropped the game since the first two. So let's see if they can continue the not quite a reverse sweep. But uh, they saw, see if they can solve the G2 puzzle with a quick 4 out. All right, we are 3-2 in this best of seven. That puts a potential match point for NRG. And G2, I certainly wouldn't count them out of this one just yet. The score lines have been so close in this first best of seven. I genuinely don't know what to expect, but that is the excitement and the magic. North American Rocket League. We've got Fireburner up, JNAPS. He's got the pressure here against G2. Garrett holding onto that midfield. It's Kronovi here for G2. Might be able to make the play just a bit wide. The question comes uh -oh. now, are they going to make the commit? That's Oh, that's Rizzo. Almost. But Garrett G forcing Rizzo out of the play kind of sets them up for a little bit of a difficult time dealing with that situation. And now it will be NRG taking advantage, moving from the midfield. Bit of a mess up here on defense. This is the Fireburner and Jacob ran to each other. Able to dodge it though, really wasn't much of a problem. Um, yeah, you see, NRG, they also go for those defensive demos as well. And Kronovi taking out Garrett. But um, NRG doesn't care. They're keeping up the pressure. I've been watching Jacob's camera for the past game or so and just seeing how he's playing. A lot of the time, he's in the offense. He's bumping the goalie, as you see right here. And there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Caster curse is real, people. I've heard the stories. It is true. Jacob Finally. takes the boost, bumps Rizzo, puts it in between the two defenders. Just Jacob thinks. What a camera to be watching for you there. And you know what? Finally, some verification on the Caster's curse. <laughs> but to be honest, Carm, we've all been lying about it. That's the first time it's actually been real. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. You fooled me. <laughs> Back in now. 
And this is from the second faceoff. Garrett comes through. J Naps. He's into the corner. Once again, great setups. That's a play to self. He's almost got a finisher here. Grizzo and Kronobi can make the finish, but it's so close yet so far. As NRG is set up. Oh my goodness, what a bullet. A great stop here from the G2. They're going to double commit on the force here, and the defense holds on. That looked like it was going to be a great counterplay for NRG. Yeah, they had a triangle there, and those that's the most dangerous positions to be in is when you're playing a three-person formation or like a three-person game. You always want to try and form triangles as much as you can because it leaves passing options open pretty much every angle you want when you can hit the ball. And uh, Garrett had the choice there of going across to Jacob. Like I said, I've been watching him this series. Instead, he took the shot. It was really great. j -Naps just made an incredible save. Oh, Kronovi on the wheels, almost making that touch there, turning the momentum just a bit. Not quite enough there for him. We're at two minutes, a little just past the half now, and Kronovi setting up a nice touch here from the ceiling. That was a great control play. The defense is going to be able to round this one up. Oh, oh no, they're not. JNAP's almost taking control of the gap there. Rizzo going in for the back, and it's Kronovi. They've disrupted the defense enough oh, no. here. Oh, no, Jacob! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> oh, that's that's the mistake you don't want to make playing on the wall. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, just Jacob things, unfortunately, in the wrong net this time. Um, that was a, G2 is starting to ramp up the pressure a little bit. Um, G, uh, energy was low on boost for most of that last 30 seconds or so. So Jacob kind of had to pre-jump there because of all the pressure and because he was low on boost. Right. So G2 kind of forced Jacob's pre-jump and uh, led to unfortunate own goal. Fireburner was a little high on the attack on that one, but that would have been the money maker in just a second's difference. Oh, interesting bump. That's a three-way bump there for the pressure to continue. And it's Kronovi. He's go oh, oh no. Look at the pressure. Look at that. Jacob is just going to be physical. And instead of trying to get between the passes, it looks like they're just going to go ahead and take the players out. <laughs> yeah, Jacob like saw me. Oh, oh my Garrett. Why? Okay. So a little unexpected, but what control he's got in the air to finish this one off just in front of the goal. Yeah, Garrett, I mean, flipping his car around so he lightly hits it off the top and rotates his car around to hit it with the front of his car, powerfully down to that. That's pretty much impossible to save. I mean, fire set him up great from midfield. Mm -hmm. Garrett doesn't miss those. <laughs> Garrett certainly does not miss those. Oh! But that one was almost a bit upsetting there. G2 now, they've got the pressure. They're working back into the orange zone. Kronovi oh, drops this one lightly. That was amazing. And Fireburner's there to carry it away, but there was a lot of potential to punish the NRG defense off of a fantastic play there by Kronovi. And I don't think the G2 offense is done just yet. With 30 seconds, they've got a little bit of making up to do. They'd like to put this one into overtime because otherwise, this will be an NRG series. And this has been a very hard fought one for G2 to have to give up so easily here mm -hmm. in game six. Yeah, I don't know if what Jacob is doing to them on defense is legal. Uh, he's <laughs> like bumping them from behind. He's taking them out of the plays. And, oh. oh my gosh. Hello. Well, there's Garrett again. And I don't think we can talk about how strong this offense has been on energy without talking about how positioned Garrett has been consistently for the finishing move against the G2 defense. Yeah, I mean, Fireburner to Garrett seems to be the connection right now for NRG. That's the last three goals, I believe, have been, or other than Jacob's solo play, have been Fireburner to Garrett play. So it seems like they've figured something out. Again, I think it's those protein bars that Fire said that he was getting. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's nice to see. NRG is one of my favorite teams to watch because, uh, G2 as well because they just have such a knack and synergy with each other because they've been playing together for so long. It's such a nice thing to watch to see all the team plays. And now get Garrett's getting protein, protein bars. bars. Garrett just <laughs> said he was going to get them. So expect, expect more craziness out of Garrett next game if he's also getting the protein bars that Fire's having. God bless. We're going to have to get them a... Uh... 
We're gonna have to give them some sort of protein bar sponsorship at this point. Uh, they, <laughs> they may be the, maybe that's the decision maker. Maybe we start seeing like we go to the next LAN and all the players are all eating the exact same bars and they're just uh, just outperforming and just playing <laughs> the most phenomenal games. Um, but a great series from NRG and G2 mm -hmm. both. But NRG is gonna come out strong here in the first one. Now, if you are just joining us, a little bit of how this one's going to work. We've got a best of three of best of sevens. So the first best of seven just concluded and that will be NRG's in their favor. G2 still has a chance if they win the next best of seven series, they take it to a third best of seven. And that is by far the longest amount of time that any team should ever have to play, but absolutely phenomenal here. So, um, but and so before we go on, I want to give a shout out here to the chat. We've got a lot of exciting sponsorships today, making Rival Week possible. And we're going to go ahead and give out the first giveaway code, and that is going to be Turtles. And we'll talk about the sponsors here, right here, right now, while we're getting that going. So Turtles, T-R-R-T-L-Z. If you spell it wrong, you get nothing. So don't forget to put that in there in the chat, and, and that is T-R-R-T-L-Z. If you can't spell it, hopefully one of the mods will put it in there oh so kindly for you. And Turtles, they put up some absolutely beautiful bracelets. They give you the energy, the strength, and the power to make more friends, share adventures. Don't forget to do hashtag share your adventure and hashtag Turtles over on Twitter when you go check out your awesome, beautiful... They make me more beautiful, Karma. I think bracelets in general make me beautiful, but Turtles bracelets, they really do. They, they warm my heart. And I, I don't know if you have any, but you should definitely get some. They're, they're one. I don't. I definitely need something to make me look more beautiful. So I think I, uh, <laughs> I will look for that. Um, oh, do they uh, have any like? Do they come with protein bars or is it just <laughs> just the bracelet? <laughs> I don't think they come with protein bars. Um, but if they did. <laughs> Just keep, Turtles marketing, just to listen. Karma's talking about protein bars. We've had a lot of conversation around protein in general. And we work something out here. We're going to go to a break in just a second, but do not go anywhere. We'll be back with the next series, the next best of seven between G2 and NRG. So do not go anywhere. This is PRL Rival.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are back. It is day four of Rival Week. We've had a very exciting time so far. We've got a lot of great Rocket League to bring you in just a second. I'm Unthink once again in the casting booth with none other than Karma Karma. So we got to watch a lot of great action out of game one, and NRG actually turns the tides and plays G2 into the advantage there for the victory in that first best of seven. But now we're walking into the next series. The question comes yep. down to how do you adjust? How do you come back into that as G2? And how do you start turning the tight end, playing into a game three or a series three potential? I mean, first things first, you have to get Rizzo's power back. Uh, <laughs> if Rizzo doesn't have power, that could be an issue. Um, but for G2, I mean, I'm probably looking for all the things I kind of talked about during the cast. Mm -hmm. uh, try to find each other more and look for, I mentioned this before, but they're like, usually you pass it to your teammate, you get the clear, and then you also want to follow up that clear with pressure. Seems right. like G2 is maybe passing to their teammate getting the clear, but they're not really following up the clear with pressure. So I want to look for them to do that, maybe get some more demos on NRG and see if they can keep up that like classic G2 pressure we know where they're boost stealing, they're bumping, and kind of, they kind of run away with the game when they do that properly. <laughs> for a lot of potential coming in for G2. I'm looking forward to seeing how they handle this situation because there was definitely a lot of dangerous stuff coming out of NRG, especially that, uh, especially watching Fireburner setting up all those plays with Garrett. So we're going to see how that goes in just a second while we're waiting for Rizzo's power to come back on, which uh, I do believe is actually NRG sending over a spy to shut down all of his power behind his house, like, like Scooby-Doo style. Mm -hmm. They're just like cutting the lines. Um, while we're waiting for that to get going, want to stop and thank all the sponsors who are making Rival Week possible. We could not do this without them. We talked about Turtles a little earlier. If you put in the codes there, we do have some winners from that. Thank you guys so much for joining us for that giveaway. Also like to give a nice shout out to Bad Panda GG. That's Bad Panda. So they are a wonderful site. They've got uh, video tutorials. They can teach me how to be better. They can teach me how to be like Karma. Uh, they've got coaching, they've got replay analysis, and they will, they tell me they're going to take my game to the next level. I don't know if they can take me all the way from silver to gold, but I certainly have a lot of faith there. Let's head over to badpanda.gg today and get all of the latest and greatest of what they're putting up there in terms of content. Also want to give a nice shout out there. We had them on uh, last night as well. We talked about it, and I think Subi actually has one of the shirts, but Victus GG, Victus Gaming. Uh, they are all about helping you create and discover esports tournaments. So if you're looking to make that happen, you can publish them for free. Player check-in. They've got real-time brackets and all of the fixins that you'd want for a very awesome tournament experience. So don't forget to head over to Victus.gg. And then while we're talking about sponsors, can't stop and deny the fact that we've had some wonderful donations coming in so far. I'm going to give a quick shout out to all the folks there. That is going to be Husky dropping in $10 into the bucket. All of that Husky. stuff goes towards the player pool. Husky, give him some love. He's one of my favorite people in the world. Going to give a shout out to one of our developers, Guru, pulling in a nice $40 donation. Oh, so sweet. Thank you so much. I hope. I hope that money goes right back out to Guru because we pay, you know, our developers for making stuff happen. And then, uh, and then of course, the big man himself, the one, the only, the Santa Claus of Rocket League because he just keeps going, given from PRL love. That is going to be Doovy dropping a nice $50 into the pool here for NRG and G2. And I, of course, I know, Scheist, I know you're the actual papa. I know how this works. He's giving me the voice in the ear. I know how this one goes. We've got a couple more minutes here before we get in. I'm just wondering, you know, so far I want to get a confirmation here on Rizzo, but it sounds like his power may not come on. It might be a potential sub situation. Stick around. We're going to see how that goes. This is going to be some pretty tense moments. Karma, if you could have anyone in the world coming into sub for G2, I know it's you, but anyone besides you, what are the considerations you have, at least for that, if it's not a specific player, what are the considerations you want to have for that player coming in as a sub? Um... I don't know, in G2's position, it's tough because mm -hmm. they haven't been playing with a sub. They haven't really, I mean, they've just been playing with each other. So mm -hmm. I guess you just kind of want to play with someone maybe who's familiar with your system. Um, okay. I mean, it's unfortunate, as bad as it sounds, it's a really hard situation because you're so used to playing with a teammate when you have to bring in a sub like this, especially quick, it's kind of... Uh, just throw it on the table and hope it sticks, you know what I mean? So, yeah. or on the wall, the table. Yeah. 
table, uh, <laughs> wall, you know, ceiling, you whatever. Throw it throw it somewhere. Something, right? Yeah, you just <laughs> throw it somewhere, and hopefully it works. Uh, I wonder who they'll bring. I am oh so curious. While we're waiting for them to get in here, we'll get some confirmation from the boys in the lab in just a second. Shout out to the rest of the sponsors making this possible, because there are so many. We have time to talk about all of them. I want to see. Uh, did yep. I give a shout out? I did not yet. Tracker. I have a sponsor Network. shout out. Ooh. Well, you know what, Kyle? Before yeah. I get into Tracker Network, give me a sponsor shout out. Where do you got? Uh, is it a this, protein bar? This broadcast is also sponsored by Landlines in 2017. Uh, <laughs> chat. I do mute my microphone when my landline goes off, for the record. Uh, it's my grandma, so don't hate on it. Okay? okay. She doesn't know how to use a cell phone. So, landlines do still exist, believe it or not. It's wonderful. Now the question, I guess it comes down to, is it at least cordless? As have we gotten to that point? It is cordless. Yeah, yeah, okay. she's cordless. Yeah. Okay. Thank 1997 God. Seven called. You good, think good. She'd okay. bring it with her so it wouldn't ring for long, but you know, <laughs> it rings for it seems like nothing. ten minutes sometimes. <laughs> she have a fax machine over there too. I'm just curious. Maybe now she'll stop for you, dude. Ooh, wow. Bringing that I mean, old she's school. Probably not doing anything right now. Oh, well, you know, if anything, you know, they need someone to fill the body right now. Poor Rizzo dealing with power issues. I got to tell you, that's a bit of a tough situation to have to be in when you're already in a long enough game as it is like this. Uh, we may go to a break. But before we go, I want to stop and thank the sponsors. Of course, we haven't talked about Tracker Network. So stats and leaderboards for games like Destiny, Overwatch, and of course, Rocket League. Don't forget to head over to Tracker Network. They are, uh, what is it? Rocketleague.tracker.network. If you want to check out a little bit more info specifically on Rocket League, you can catch all of the wonderful stats and great stuff. We've actually got uh, PRO Rival Week up there. So if you want to see all the teams and players that are in there, it's got great drop downs. The UI is phenomenal. Don't miss out on that. And Lichinio, hey, that's a throwback. Look at that. Lichinio yeah. subbing in. What are the, I mean, so when we're thinking about playstyle differences, I mean, what's the separation between Rizzo and, and Latch? Uh, they're, they're kind of similar. I would say Rizzo is much stronger defensively, um, but Latch is maybe stronger offensively, at least if you guys remember him from the I by Power days. He's really good at like getting up for redirects and he loves boost. So maybe he can boost steal just as much as Rizzo. Um, Lucinio kind of makes sense because it's Cronovi. I think he's, he's their captain still, um, is, you know, He's doing those 2v2 videos with Lachino, and they used to be teammates, so they play a lot together. So um, it's nice to see maybe the duo reunited again. Maybe is, it's the spark that like, you need, you know? Ooh. <laughs> this is definitely going to be some That's different chemistry, time. and this is, this is a season one throwback. And I am very excited to see how this goes. So we will have Lachinio subbing in. Then I think uh, Shais confirmed for me, this is the first sub in that we've had for uh, for Rival Week so far mid-series. I don't think we've had anything like that come in just yet. And it's just, it's a bit unexpected, but it is what it is. G2, they're going to come in strong. We're going to see how this one shifts up the dynamic. There's a lot of stuff to consider. And if you're, and if you're in RG and you're coming into this matchup, uh, what are some things you have to watch out for with Lucinio that you might not have necessarily seen with Rizzo? Um, those redirects, for sure. Uh, I don't know if Lucinio bumps as much as Rizzo, or he likes to be as aggressive as... Or, I mean, Rizzo might not be as aggressive as Lucinio. So maybe if G2 seems to have been lacking the offense, they've been shut out, maybe Lucinio's offense can maybe get them to have more pressure, which will throw off the G2 rotations, or okay. perhaps just Latch doing weird things that Energy doesn't expect because he's not used to playing with his G2 teammates will help. Uh, it's hard to say. I've never seen them play with mm -hmm. Latch, or honestly, I haven't yeah. seen Latch play in too long, except for at DreamHack. And um, right. you know, it would be nice to see him back in the competition. Having not seen him in a while, I know the the crowd usually likes him. He's um, really really nice kid and popular yeah. within the community. So this is going to be pretty exciting one to see. I'm very excited to get this one going here. We'll be joining in just a second. Thank you guys for sticking around with us through Acts of God and otherwise. 
We'll have our G2 playing with Lachinio against NRG coming in. We're hopping into the server right here, right now. Welcome once again. This is Series 2 of our Rival Week Day 4. And we have NRG once again. If you're just catching up with us here, NRG is up one in the series count for the best of three. And now we're into the second one. This is everything for G2 to come in. So there's a lot of contention. And look, you can see the season one world champs matching up for <laughs> Novi and Latch, jumping in with JNAPS. We're going to get going. I'm so curious to see how this one goes. We've already got Jacob coming in off the first touch. Chinio is making a stop in the box. A little bit slower to start here, but already the pressure building from NRG. Fireburners off the back, forcing Kronovi. Latch has got the play into the line. And Carol, ooh, that's a good setup for center. This is Lucinio Kronovi territory. You know, you maybe it's possible that that two's chemistry is going to be a big difference maker for him. Yeah, it could be. Um, I, I want to see how Latch fits in on their rotations because G2, like I was saying earlier, kind of plays a unique style where they like to put on so much offensive pressure when they're really feeling it that, I mean, Latch is an adaptable player. Maybe he can just slide in and help him out. Um, I've been watching the Fireburner cam right here. I was hoping that they would run a kickoff play right off the faceoff to pressure Latch for his first, you know, 10 seconds into the game. They elected not to do that. And G2 seems to be putting on the pressure right here. Hello. There you go. Hello. Ringing the bell, calling the landline, bringing it home here. Jacob's missing the air for that one. And JNAPS completes against three defenders who are in potential, but really the two overextending there on the first touch there, the the, uh, the double commit, that kind of set up NRG mm -hmm. for a really difficult stat when you're talking about JNAPS coming in for the finish. Yeah, it looked like, I think it was Garrett, Jacob. Jacob was low on boost. And um, Garrett may have thought Jacob had it. Jacob may have thought he had it. Both ended up whiffing. JNAPS punishing NRG for the mistake, which is what you need to do against NRG. They're a top team. They don't make money. So you have to take advantage of them when they do make that mistake. We're now in a G2 world and a different one at that. And that's a nice demo setup. Fireburner will take out JNAPS and try to stall the pressure a little bit here. Fireburner's right behind Garrett. Make a potential play with Lachinio, setting up with JNAPS. And definitely, I, we've and I've seen Lachinio part at least part of the first two minutes so far, has been pretty aggressive up in front of the midfield, not sticking too uh -oh. far back on defense. He doesn't need to. And there's Kronovi, set up with a JNAPS touch. That's 2 0. Yeah, it looked like um, Garrett and Jacob going for the same ball again, and like they were on the last goal, and neither of them able to pick it up. Empty net for Crow. Maybe that'll get Crow going. Crow's been a bit quiet in terms of Kronovi type, Kronovi esque moves and things that he usually does during a series, which kind of are unorthodox, similar to Jacob. He's been kind of quiet this series as Latch throws on that. Uh, hopefully, Crow can get going. He's kind of been a bit quiet. I think the Kronovi can lean a little bit on Lachinio right now on offense for the passes, and it's looking like he's done it twice now. It's certainly aggression that is working out in their favor and, and possibly putting JNAPS a little bit more on the defensive end of this. It's just, it's interesting. The chemistry is definitely working itself out right now. The electrons are buzzing. The question is where the bonds will be made. It's 2-0 <laughs> midfield now. I think the doctor would appreciate that one. We're in for the orange the zone right. here. <laughs> Gotta keep it real. It's Jacob <laughs> setting up JNAPS. Here's the passes. They've definitely got this going. They've got a lot of good synergy right now. And it's a st it almost feels like NRG is stalled on defense a bit before they can actually make their setup. G2 is back at it, keeping these these triangles over and over again. We talked about how dangerous they were before. Lachinio is adding a new element to this. I don't think NRG was ready for it. Yeah, G2 is playing really close to each other. Um, like they're all kind of on top of each other, which can kind of throw defense off. You don't know. Ooh, wow. Just missed with Fireburner. Oh. You don't know who's potentially going for the ball in that situation, which can be like if you're playing close to each other like this, kind of like KDOP does, where they're like first to the ball when it's a 50 50 or the ball just escapes. Um, that can be tough for defense to read. Can this unpredictable play that we're seeing from G2 right now, can that be adjusted to within this series, or is NRG going to have to step back? I mean, this is. This is a tough situation to have to come into completely against essentially, not essentially an unknown, but an unknown element as part of the G2 squad. 
Yeah, sure. I mean, I think anything can be adapted, especially when you're talking about Fireburner, who's one of the veterans of this game. He played Sark forever. Um, he's been at the top of, you know, North America for a while, as well as his team being top of North America. I think that they're probably the best team at adapting. Oh, boy. Oh. That Fire was so... is a solo duelist. Hello? Look at the dribble one and two, and the crossbar stops him, but that's good shadow play from Jacob, knowing that, hey, that's coming close. I should be here for the crash. That's good teamwork. That's been great communication to be able to follow up. Yeah, I mean, Fireburner, I haven't seen him play once since I first started playing the game like a year ago. It's nice to see he still has it in him, you know? <laughs> He's definitely bringing the heat now, and with the 2-1, 40 seconds, the energy pressure is not going to let up. Hold on to potentially push it into overtime. We're closing in on the 30-second mark now. Already two Savior medals on the board, one for each squad, so you know that the offense is being extraordinarily deadly from both sides. Fireburner, latch on the perimeter. Keeping this one back up. This is good passing play. They can work down the time a little bit with 15 seconds. This is up to NRG. Make the move forward 10 seconds. This is back into the center. Garrett's here. Fireburner's just a little bit too far. Oh, he might have overtouched on this one. That's a little bit disappointing. I think if he'd been back in the midfield, the pressure would have been a lot more important for him to play that one through. But as the time drops, Woo. that is going to be G2 with a surprise showing here from Licinio. But it is a very welcome surprise to say the least because G2 is going to take the first match of this best of seven. Yeah, um, G2 doing a really good job at putting on the pressure that game, stealing the first game off of G2, which is what they started to do in the last series. Hopefully they can keep that going forward. Um, a really interesting storyline here is if J Naps loses power, will the resurrection <laughs> of Rocket Jesus come back? That is the real storyline that we need to be following right can now. Can we? The qu yeah, if the power goes out, over zero is in. And that would be, uh, I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but that is certainly a distinct possibility. Wouldn't it be interesting if we ended up getting a season one I buy power showing up here for the G2 squad? <laughs> I just, I think that that's absolutely, I mean, now the question is, can NRG get their spy over to JNAP's house in time all the way from Rizzo's house? I wonder how many spies they well, have. Well, really. actually, if if Rizzo and JNAP's lose power, then it becomes, is Kronovi the spy? Oh. The details and the intricacies of this meme are just next level. <laughs> Next level <laughs> memography, which is a nice new study here. Oh, look at that, Garrett. Oh, Speaking no, of memes, not like showing this. up. Look at that. That's a nice roll for the finish there. The defense a little bit overextended on the play, but Garrett's right between Latch and Jay. You know, it looked like Latch actually might have been able to touch that one, but the crossbar sets it up for a bit of a of a discontent uh, bounce on that. Yeah, G2 just overcommitting on offense, unfortunately. Uh, a little too aggressive. Latch was on his way back, but was a little bit late getting to that corner boost, and uh, Garrett punished him for it. Well, that is a turn here for NRG, who feel like that they their early game has certainly adjusted accordingly. It's going to be an interesting one here. The question will be, how will G2 respond coming in strong out of game one? There's a lot of rock. Oh my, oh my gosh, Fireburner! That's the second one's beautiful ones play that we've got to see He's so far. A solo duelist. Catches <laughs> it on the hood, goes under. I think that was Kronovi and around JNAPS. Stop oh. it. Loop de loop and pull, and Fireburner is looking cool. I wish he had less syllables. That would have been cooler. But we're in now. Only one minute <laughs> in so far, and we're already 2-0 here for NRG. What a huge shift from game one. Latch stopping. Oh, Jacob. Jacob. He's got the answer. Oh, oh man, my. you saw that coming a mile away, and it's art in the air for 3-0. Uh, Jacob just controlling the ball off the top of his car off the backboard following it up jnaps can't that's a tough read when you're coming from in the net trying to read a double touch off the backboard it's a really difficult save jnaps just missing it and of course jacob not gonna miss those well, they're not gonna sit around off the face off again that early pressure has finally been subsiding g2 will take a demo to answer that question we are 3-0 here for nrg which is a bit of a crazy turn here, considering what last game looked like. What an angle, oh Jacob! 
Once again, the wild card baby showing up, bringing it 4 0. <laughs> the 10 gallon hat adding a little extra power to this shot right <laughs> here and uh, getting it right over the top of Latch. I haven't seen G2. Uh, doing any demos or anything lately. I don't think NRG has been demoed yet since the beginning of this series. So when, when you're down 4-0 right now um, in G2, you're kind of like, all right, let's try and come back. But at the same time, you're also thinking, let's try and also focus and try some new things to see what could potentially work next game. Even if we don't win this game, try some new things to see if maybe we can get a goal and see something that can work for the next series. I mean, or not series, been... I'm sorry. Next game in the series. <laughs> it's confusing even for us, but it's the same time. It's best of three of best of sevens for everyone just joining us. We're in the second game or the second series. You see that? You see how hard that is? Yeah. <laughs> can't do it We're 4 0. And NRG. Oh, no. That was so close, but that's going to be denied. Jacob, though, again, being the complete uh -oh. controlling force on the offense here for NRG right now. And he's extremely dangerous, and in our, our G2 just can't get their arms around him. Yeah, Jacob kind of letting loose this series. Um, he seemed to be somewhat under control when uh, Rizzo was playing. There really wasn't... Oh, Garrett. <laughs> little Garrett. Stuck on the was post. <laughs> A little bit there. Even Garrett's <laughs> laughing. <laughs> Garrett gives himself a lot of love. That's a really good post. Yeah, I, I agree, Latch. That's a really good post indeed. 1-4. That'll shorten the gap just a bit. We're just past the half in G2. That's good setup for them. It's a bit of a drop-off here for the NRG defense, but their offense has been so on point, you have to wonder if maybe they're just completely shifting the focus. Just say, hey, how can we play in front of the midfield? Because right now we don't have to focus so much on these defensive rotations, at least in this game. And I would say last game was very different, but now that they've adjusted to that, that early play style right off the faceoff, it seems to be working a little bit more in their favor, at least right now against G2. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, energy seems to like, they just, let me look at this. They feel comfortable right now. G2 has to do something to make them feel uncomfortable. They're just way too comfortable. They're passing to each other whenever they want. They don't seem like they're boost starved in this game. Uh, they're, they're going up for crazy touches that they're hitting and putting on target. You need to do something to knock them off. Um, and that's up to G2 to figure out, you know, what, what they need to do. I'm on the demo plan. Go for demos. <laughs> I'm pro demo as well, also because they look really cool and I like explosions. <laughs> a minute and 15 seconds. This is a short time here for G2 to pull off three goals, but this is Kronobi for the first one. That's Jacob Deny. Really no one getting a full touch on the play. The challenge itself kind of interesting motion forward. Uh -huh. Jacob, oh no, again. But here's another touch here coming from Fireburner. He's got Garrett G on the top of the 18. Can't get out from the top of the box. That's 50 seconds holding on. The pressure still building from NRG. I don't think that they're done with the play just yet, but G2 says they are. Here comes the attack. Once again, 43 seconds. There's still a chance, but there's not much time. This is G2 working forward. If they don't hold on to this one, it'll be 1-1 one, one here for the series. But right now, I think it comes down to NRG. They can slow the pace to their level, and they can decide how they want to control this because there's just not really enough time for G2 if they can keep this up. Ooh. Ooh. Garrett, making the yeah. I've been watching Latino's camera since he joined in the the games in for the series. And it's it's a really tough spot for Latch because G2 just plays such an interesting way that's unique to them with Rizzo and to come in, um, it seems like they're still figuring things out, even though they took game one. Uh, especially this game there seemed to be a little bit of like a still understanding rotations trying to communicate with each other more so right. see i think the key to this next game is to see if they can figure out their defensive rotations obviously nrg was super comfortable that mm -hmm. game and um they need to do something to knock that off rotate better um try and boost steel try and control the midfield something that is uh, just takes nrg out of their comfort zone <laughs> and they, I think that they have the ability to do that with Corp. Marcinio jumping in. 
they've got a little mm-hmm. bit of like how can we they should maybe they talk about how can we make Lichinio the surprise how can we how can we make him the unknown here in this setup to where NRG is forced to play out of where they're comfortable and that's certainly a chance for that sure. but they've also and as you mentioned I really just want to see more demos and I think coming into game three Garrett is not wasting any time already almost to that upper corner and another shot oh what a stop Kronovi is going to hold on to that one but 10 seconds into the game and NRG is already battling forward yeah it's uh defense is uh, oh goodness <laughs> I was about to say, defense seems to be a bit confusing right now for G2 as we watch this beautiful play right here. And, uh, yeah, G2 struggling a bit without Rizzo. Um, a little bit of an unfortunate defense play there for G2. If, if I'm in G2's position, uh, maybe you could try and let Lachinia loose on offense. Maybe if you're Kronovi, you sit back and play that defender role more to let Latch be more comfortable. And... and Maybe it's on the teammates instead of Lucino to kind of adapt and play around his style. It's it's a tough situation when you have a sub coming in for you though. There's there's so many factors that make you comfortable. When you, I mean, you're playing an RG. You're not playing um, a new team. You're playing the best team in NA, especially the best online team. So there's it's so difficult for this G2 squad to play with a sub right now. And it's, it's such a short amount of time to really have to say how can we adjust. To our own to now our own play style yep. essentially match 1 1 for the series and 1 0 for the entire kitten caboodle which <laughs> i don't think anyone uses that phrase but hey just aged myself a bit here folks i came in on my covered wagon to bring that to you live here minute and 30 seconds oh on target jnaps though a great bicycle that's going to set up here for Kenobi in the air but garrett g is already looking for a backboard play he can come in he almost gets the finish up on that one Lachinio is in the right place at the right time. They're waiting for the moment where it's time to strike. And here it is, Lachinio almost, but Jacob will disrupt. It is looking like right now, Kronovi and Lachinio are going to be the power move forward. It just seems like that that's been what's consistently getting them a little bit more ground in the orange zone. Uh-oh, demo from NRG here. Yeah, um, Latch and Crow have the synergy. I mean, they've played together before. And uh, Latch, in my opinion, is a very aggressive player. He's very comfortable in offense. So, because he comes from that, he's he was known a long time ago as a 1v1 player. He's really good at threes, the world champ. So, if you can kind of just try and let Latch do his thing on offense and maybe kind of support behind him, um, that might have su some success for G2. Because right now they're struggling. I mean, they're... They're not exiting the zone very cleanly. Their offensive chances are uh, seldomly coming right now. So something has to, you're trying to piece this puzzle together right now if you're GTA. Got quite a few pieces to try to make work. Garrett is between again. This was something we saw out of the last game and he got between the two. And they've already answered for that one though. That'll be Garrett here stopping from pushing away Kronovi. This is the chance. Ooh, that's set up for Fireburner. Jacob's almost there. That was a pretty long pass to work through. Garrett's going to try to make a finish in the box. He can't get the completion at the top. Fire's going to lose this one through. That was two great setups. There was no capitalization from NRG, but they've got the right idea to force G2 to react. Yeah, NRG just seems like they're toying with their food right now. It's like only a matter of time until they put another one in. They have so much pressure. They had G2 there on the back heel, all three players in net with no boost. And they ended up kind of letting off the pressure. Oh, Latch, Oof, that would've been nice. Um, they ended up like letting the pressure off a little bit and energy just seems, again, they just seem comfortable even though it's only 1-0 right now. J, almost, but another J will counter that one. Kronovi. <laughs> For Garrett. Oh, that's a good stop there. Closing Kronovi up before he gets to the box. It's a pretty safe move if you're talking about what he can do with that control in the air. JNAP's almost. Lucinio sets up. The setups here seem to be good for G2. Uh, the NRG defense is reading very well into those. Definitely hooked on Phonics if we're talking about how they're handling the control in the back. The, the one good thing for G2, though, is it's only 1-0. As much pressure as energy has had, they haven't scored on it. So all you need is one solo play or one really nice team play, and Ooh. never mind. I don't think that was expected 100%, but Garrett's uh, finesse control here on the dribble 
Look how he plays this one through. It looked like so the challenge comes in, but Garrett's just holding on. JNAPS may have been able to make the touch on that one. If you're on the line like that, I mean, what are the considerations you've got when you've got to basically play the guessing game? Uh, it was actually like a really nice play by Garrett because he had Crow behind him going for the demo and he stopped boosting for a bit and breaks, which Kenobi went by him. And it was a really nice play that kind of is hard to notice in replay, but and then ended up getting that solo duelist dunk. It's like NRG is the solo duelist team right now. Um, <laughs> even though they have tons of team plays, they're not scoring on them. So they're scoring with their dribbles, which is a good element to have. Oh my goodness, that almost worked. Oh, Go, this is cool. It's done, but it's cool. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> NRG, a, a squad of ones players, but they've definitely got, they do have, I would agree, they've got that control together. They've definitely got the chemistry, but what's, what is working for them to break through that G2 defense has been the individual plays. A lot of control coming in from Gareth this game. I think we saw what we saw out of Fireburner in the last match. We are now seeing kind of out of Garrett coming into this one, but that doesn't take away the fact that Jacob was absolutely in control when we're talking about the defense. There just seemed to be a lot of positivity coming out of just when Jacob would get the control on the play and make the full save, that he would have a successful clear forward to then counter the play with that pressure instead of just kind of waiting back and allowing G2 a second chance at goal. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's, uh, it's Energy's defense is, when they're rotating right, they rarely double commit. Um, and when they do, usually it's just some form of miscommunication and, and something bad ends up happening because energy is really good at playing off of their teammates. Uh, when you don't double commit and you play off your teammates, it allows you to have a really easy transition in offense. And uh, G2, again, they need to do something to just throw them off right now. Energy is, they're rotating well, they're passing well, they don't seem to have any boost problems. Um, and, oh, okay. Oh, that was a handoff if there ever was one. Shaking hands before they give the ball to each other. That's Jacob in control. You know, Kronovi missing the play off of the wall there against Jacob, who just has complete shutdown there to finish off for Fireburner. That's a good start here for talking about 15 seconds into this match. Yeah, Jacob making good use of that Dominus tall hitbox there in terms of, like, the car's really wide. He was just able to use that wide top corner of his Dominus and pop it right over the G2 goalie there and fire burners wide open for the goal. Oh, big hat hitbox confirmed indeed. <laughs> We're gonna play this through now, 30 oh, seconds. Oh, well, there we go. Oh, oh, interesting, okay. We're gonna see how that one goes out. Kronovi does hold control, but it didn't look like he was going to, but that's the kind of unexpected stuff you wanna see out of G2. Jacob, the clear, right to JNAPS. And that's a nice demo from Fireburner, who's going to try to take away JNAPS and force a rotation. They do get the counter out of this one now. Fireburner, JNAPS is in goal, making the stop. He gets it wide. But the play's not done here as Jacob's back in. Garrett G, who's been, ooh, that's a nice stall there coming in. That's So he plays the boost and he just holds off on that. That's, and that's exactly what we saw out of the last goal we got. Yeah, it's uh, Garrett was going up there, realized it was over him, just backflipped. Half flip and got down quick, realizing that he wasn't going to be able to get a good touch on it. But um, G2 really need to get someone out of net and onto the backboard or like anticipating these cross field passes from NRG. These passes are going across the field and G2 is just allowing a shot or a touch on them most of the time as an open net comes in for NRG. Uh, unfortunate there. I think someone was just caught out of position here in midfield. Looked like Latch was going up for the aerial, decided he was going to get beat. And uh, Garrett just puts away an empty net. But um, yeah, G2 needs to get faster, uh, contest more in the midfield. They're just getting beat to everything right now. Well, JNAPS ready to make the play. Lachinio's off the backboard. This one's just in tune here for Garrett G to play it up. He's got Jacob on the opposite wing and Fireburner in the center. They are committing to the offense. Jacob's going to play the midfield. Oh, he tries to deny. I'm not sure which one got it. Latch or Jacob there for that boost. Here's the chance for G2. They've got no follow-up on the play, though, but Garrett has a follow-up to Kronovi's face and is going to go ahead and shut that down, and Aww. it's the attack. And the crossbar will deny, but G2 had the right idea to get that one into position. Yeah, it's, Latch had an open shot there. Just put it high off the crossbar. Um, tough shot there. I mean, he had... 
sometimes when you have that much time to place a shot, it can be too much time, if that makes sense. Oh, Ooh. what a save from Jacob. What a save. Open the car door and shut that one down. We are just at the half. NRG will be holding on. They are currently 2-1. Advantage here for this best of seven series. And this is looking like if they can hold potential here, but there's a lot of time for G2 to turn the tides. We gotta see, you know what we gotta see? And I know this, this was with the Rizzo squad, but what we saw out of series one was a very dangerous and very aggressive G2. And I think that what we talked about, you know, you mentioned it earlier, that the passes on the cross field, them not committing to those, challenging that could be effective for them. They've got a question though, is how they can they get Lachinio involved in that chemistry? Yeah, it seems like the rotations are just kind of a bit confusing for G2 right now. Again, it's a really tough spot to be in. I don't blame the players for this. Uh, it's certainly not as uh, NRG does a nice, nice cross field team play again. Um, but it's just, it's hard when you're G2 in this situation because you're so used to playing with one person. And you have to bring a sub in who you're not used to playing with and they play completely different to what your teammate does. And not only for them is it hard, but it's even harder for Lachino coming in with no notice, no practice with the team. Um, so it's, it's really hard to perform under those circumstances. And I, it's, I feel for them, it's difficult, especially on a big stage like this as well. And if you feel for Rizzo, whose power is gone, that's right, he can't even access the internet right now. I should probably oh, do it on his phone. But if you're feeling for how tough Rizzo's got it right now, get a hashtag <laughs> uh, save Rizzo. Hashtag save Rizzo in the chat. We have no prize for that. But I just want you guys to know that we should show him some love and support here as G2 taking it on with a sub currently. And not just any game, but a extremely long series against NRG who are already a very, very strong team to be dealing with right now. With 45 seconds, time is waning. This is looking like a bit difficult. Oh, oh my goodness, no. Garrett G, his level of control in this entire series and really the entire day of play has been absolutely beautiful. That was an insane dribble from Garrett. That was crazy. I wish that would have been a Rocket Dailies win for sure. Oh yeah. Dang, that was too bad, Garrison Gwynn, but I do feel for Rizzo as well. He's probably chiseling a rock somewhere right now. He's, you know, without internet, <laughs> enter the Stone Age. So, poor Rizzo. Um, hopefully he gets his internet back soon. I mean, every minute feels like 10 hours without internet, so, as we all know in the Rock League community. He's going to have to watch Netflix by candlelight, and we're 3-0. <laughs> NRG are going to take this one through as the ball drops in just a second. That'll be 3-1. We're talking about the series right now, and NRG is in a match point potential and an entire rival, rival week night potential. I don't know how to describe, I guess, the best of three of best of sevens. They could potentially take everything right here, right now. This was a bit of an offset here from G2 and kind of what we expect out of their play style. I think this is going to be the moment here, though, where we see G2 turn on. What is going to be the decision maker here? When we're talking about what it's going to take to come back in this series, first of all, we're talking at this point full reverse sweep to come back in and play into a third best of seven. What has to change here for G2? I know we talked about a lot, but if there's just one thing that can make the difference here against NRG's play, I mean, what could it possibly be? Uh, look, try to anticipate NRG's passes towards the midfield and challenge them quicker. Um, okay. But that also, I mean, it's not that simple because when you're doing that, it also has to do with rotations and having the, enough boost in order to be able to do that, which is also connected to rotations. So it's a bit mm -hmm. tough, but for me, simply, it would just be try and challenge energy's passes quicker. Uh, they're just allowing energy too much space right now. They're pa they can pass wherever they want. They, they're they out dribbling them. And if I'm G2, I just, Trying to like uh, run a kickoff play, run something set so that you can, you know, have something off of the bat, something that gets you going immediately. Um, kickoff plays are usually good for that. If Latch knows the one that they have, um, or you could just like let loose, try and just do whatever and see if that works. Um, they need something right now because they're they haven't won since game one and that they need to adapt to what NRG is doing. 
Well, we're going to see if G2 can get a little loosey-goosey. That's two demos. If you were talking about not seeing enough of those, we're going to go ahead and open up with two in the first 15 seconds. We are in now to a 3-1, and that is going to be a everything point there potential it here. There it, it is, JNAPS. A bump. Showing the hot stuff. That's what you want to see. Pro bumping the goalie. I wonder if that would work. JNAPS, probably the best air dribbler in North America. Easy for him. He'll score that. Have I said this before? He'll score that every time. Is it going to be another one? As you say it, yes. will there be another one? And look at that, j Thank you for proving my point. Oh, the opposite of Caster's Curses when Karma shows up. Goodness gracious. Like, right now, I just picture j hitting the vape and just blowing like a super big cloud up <laughs> after that goal. Uh, he is chasing the fattest clouds and taking a second <laughs> shot here. Ape Nation, the house. Jacob's here for the counter. This is off the backboard. This is Garrett G coming up, and he's going to have to have a third. They don't have enough control on that one as the hitbox takes it high. This is now back in. Fireburner's alone on the play. He's going to try to play enough pressure. Allow G2 to force forward now. Here's Lachinio. <gasps> Could this be oh, Lash? It's looking geez. real good. Oh, two defenders see that one. They're like, <laughs> writing's on the wall. I don't think so, Lachinio. And they're going to go ahead and cross that one out. But Jacob in almost. JNAPS. If we're we're talking about what's defining the game right now. I think the first minute and first minute, it's only been a minute. The first minute here yep. has just been absolutely unreal from JNX. Yep, it's all one. G2 right now. But at the same time, if you're G2, you don't want to overcommit. You're feeling good. You, you have two goals. You have a lot of pressure, and that's great. But you're up 2-0 right now. And in pro games, when you're up 2-0, you don't want to necessarily take the foot off of the pedal, but you want to ease up a little. Don't do anything stupid. Try and conserve that two goal lead and make the other team earn it. Nothing free, basically. Nothing uh, free. Bro? You want to hashtag free Rizzo, though. <laughs> Welcome to do that there. Fireburner <laughs> taken out JNAPS. Oh, no. Oh, this, oh, no, that's two. Fireburner goes up. Oh, he's waiting for the challenge. He comes in. That was interesting. I think that was the most fakes you've seen in the box this entire game but that was absolutely unreal to hold on and almost getting the play through. Garrett, this is almost it. Coming close, Lucinio's gonna deny again. lucinio has been hot in front of the goal right now. He's got two saves of his own. And this might be, you know what, when we're talking about what could be different, we really haven't seen a lot of, you know, how do we set up JNAPs? It's been, how do we get the play forward? How do we get the pressure going? But what if this is coming down to G2 just kind of simplifying it and saying, what if we can put JNAPs on offense right now and try to feed him a little bit? There's a lot of control there. He's already got four shots on goal this game. Yeah, JNAPS has been quiet as well this entire, these two series that we played. Um, and we know he's an offensive powerhouse when he turns it on. So, yeah, I mean, that's not a bad plan. Unthing, maybe you should become a coach. <laughs> Don't do coach that. Unthing. Coach well, why not? Unthing. Yeah, uh, it's the, the disappointment in the children's faces mostly um, <laughs> when, <laughs> when they see what I have to say. Appreciate the sentiment. We've got, oh, a nice bump here away from Jay. That's Garrett. Maybe turn this one forward. He's got enough boost to make that happen. He comes, he tries to power through, almost shouldering into the way of Jay Naps. That control now coming in. Kronovi, he's got it on the nose wherever it goes. Latch, it's up, almost Fireburner. We'll drop back into the 18, almost there. That's just a good counter play coming in. Fireburner for the finish. There's no way Kronovi is coming in to get that touch with the way that one was going. Yeah, that's an incredibly hard read for Crow here. You're coming off the side wall, trying to read a backboard touch, and you're also trying to beat a defender that you know is coming full force from midfield. So it's hard for Kronovi there. Again, it's, it just seems like energy is a lot of space. Um, G2 is doing a really good job defensively, even though they're giving them that space. They're not letting them score. But it just seems like whenever something doesn't go G2's way on offense, there's a gap between energy having the ball and putting it on their side to someone being in the net and contesting so g2 just needs to you know keep defending their half you're up a goal with a minute left just try and hold on for the last minute don't do anything silly but they're fire certainly burner. feeling the pressure fire oh almost i think they're feeling the pressure of this series right now holding on with one minute nrg have turned up the heat just a bit now fire burner on the stop forward Another solid save coming in, and they've definitely, if you're talking about, oh, another Garrett G's going to take home the Savior medal, pin that one on his lapel. He's definitely earned it. 
That's a play through now. Lachinio. I'm going to give this one up. If they can get one more in, this secures a lot more for G2 right now in this game. And Fireburner's up. Almost there. No one there for the follow-up. It was a great stray ball to set up into the box, but NRG, I'm not sure they trusted how that one was going to be controlled. 30 seconds left. Jacob, two defenders going up and not allowing him any play on that one in. And this is so close. NRG, they want overtime. They can smell it. But G2, I think they're listening to you, Karma, because they're putting everything they can in front of the ball right now. I don't think they're focusing too much on offense. They're definitely just keeping the play at bay. Yeah, and Latch with a good demo there. That should buy his team five or six seconds of just ball control where there's not much pressure, um, which should seal the game for them here. As Latch 50-50, that looks like he's going to drop. Yeah, so mm -hmm. great job by G2 there. Um, I thought that they had uh, NRG had a really good counterattack left with about 30 seconds where Fireburner had that air dribble towards their net. Right. Um, and Crow got a little aggressive, went for a ball in the offensive half. He shouldn't have. He got beat, and uh, they were a little bit lucky there. NRG didn't capitalize. But they did a really nice job of just protecting. When you get two goals early like that, you can just kind of sit and back and protect. Right. You don't need to take chances anymore because you already have the lead, which is what, what you take chances for. So you can just chill on things. You can just chill. Yes. You can chill and, chill. And, and, and chill. and you know what? That game felt, I wouldn't say necessarily it was super chill, but it felt chill. The G2 had the, uh, they had the composure out of the last game. And I think they that did. that was, uh, that was the ticket for them. Also, you need to come up 2-0 in the first minute uh, with the JNAP's power hour there, essentially. Uh, there's a lot <laughs> of positivity coming out of that for the team, just in terms of overall morale. Uh, you you want to be able to walk into the game with that early advantage. You've got a lot of wiggle room to work from. We're going to kick it off now, guys. It is into game six of this best of seven. NRG still at match point for G2. They love a third best of seven. And this might be it for NRG and Fireburner. Can see it coming through, but that was a tough one to play bouncing off the cross. Yeah, Crow stuck with that boost there. Was just hopping around trying to contest. And uh, Garrett does the smart thing when your opponent doesn't have boost and you're coming on the ball. You want to hit it just to the side that they can't reach because they don't have boost and follow it up off the backboard, which is exactly what he did. He almost scored and fires like, don't worry, Garrett, I got you. I'll, I'll finish it for you. <laughs> What's up, dude? I got you. Latch. Almost. <laughs> That's going to be Jacob stopping the play through, going for the physical touch in the corner. Oh, JNAPS. Hello. That was exactly what Crow had to do to not only win the challenge against Jacob, but to set up a perfect set. Um, Psionics? Jacob went for the bump on the wall. Nothing happens. It resets yeah. Kronovi, which allows him to just hit it down to JNAPS. That's a Psionics I... please right there. <laughs> a little bit of hitbox love definitely working out for him, though. Kronovi's actually got a little bit of ping issues right now. He's sitting at about 120 ping. You gotta stop watching Netflix on his other screen. But hey, that's, that's that's the magic sometimes. Also, a shout out their $5 donation from Scribbles. Thank you so much for making Rival Week a very special event here for PRL. We are one minute and 10 seconds into game six. Jacob rolling control over to Kronovi, who's got this one now backing away. JNAPS and Lachinio holding onto the midfield. They don't have to give up too much room yet. Latch has got it just wide. They have the right idea that once again, the execution is there almost for G2. They're just a bit behind on the play for that one. And considering NRG is getting so close to them, they've only got really a split second to react to a lot of these. Yeah, um, and that was a really good setup. Even though the finish isn't there, that's something you can build off as a team. Just being there, even though it wasn't a goal, you still had the opportunity and it worked. So make note of, oh God, Garrett almost scored that. Uh, make note of that working. Um, notice what you did there and just try and keep setting that up and next time you'll be able to finish it. Only two minutes in and it's already an extremely close game. 1-1, one, one, fire burner. Oh, a second touch off the perimeter. He's got a chance here from the line that's looking good for Jacob. Can't get through. Oh, save. But that was, uh, once again, JNAPS. This series is the series of JNAPS. Ooh. And a stop, but not a complete one. Kronovi's going to take this one in 2-1. Yep, Latch with a faking it call in comms, I heard it, and uh, able to juke out Garrett in that there. Excellent fake by Latch, he had the boost, and um, goes off the bottom of Garrett's car. 2-1 G2. 
And we're in here from the fourth face-off. Kronovi's got a long play here. This is a little over extension, only one defender back. And Latch, oh no! The fourth defender reveals himself <laughs> as the crossbar. And that will be Latch denied, but man, he was definitely supplied if we're talking about a great setup from the blue zone. This can be J Naps off the wall. He's got Lichinio. Can we make a completion here? Garrett G almost setting up here for Fireburner. Once again, we know that combo is something that G2 is very much aware of. Lichinio's got the backboard. Kronovi almost into this one. And this is the third setup we've seen since the faceoff from both sides. Well, really, we're just the last second play isn't coming through just yet. The defense on both sides is doing a great job reading and then setting up for counters. Yep. And um, Lash with a really nice job. They're recognizing he has space. And Jane Epps with the finish. But this this goal goes back to Latch. Latch had a ton of space on the defensive side. Instead of rushing it and just clearing the ball, he brought it up the wall, realized he even had more space, jumped off the wall, went for an extra dribble touch, which Latch is so good at, beat that one defender, and set up Jane Epps off the wall. It feels like G2 is definitely getting more comfortable with the lineup as is right now. I think that that's working for them. And they're definitely, we're seeing the results here is 3-1, up two now. That's the comfort level you want with that two point cushion. Here's another attempt, almost in. Lachinio being the setup master now over the last two plays, going for a potential third. JNAPS is up here with an almost play here from Lachinio. That's going to be a short stop here. Kenobi can get that one over Jacob, but he can't get it over Fireburner, who has the control up to Jacob now into the corner, setting it up at the top of the box. This is two coming up. Garrett's answer. Uh, That's a great <laughs> call from Fireburner to say, hey, Garrett, I'm not going to quite get the height on this one. Why don't you come in and finish this up? Yeah, Jacob headhunting Latch on that play was full boosting at him from behind. Latch trying to avoid the demo and contest the ball at the same time. Jacob was making it really difficult, and he just force Latch into a position where he couldn't really do anything and Jacob just flicks it mid and they were able to put that one away only down a goal with a minute left for energy. Well, they are certainly giving the kids a show. It's three, two, we keep talking, we talk about, you know, when G2 is in this series, they've gotten ahead, you know, by two. NRG is not Ooh. willing to wait and there it is, Jacob. Three, three, and we are in a very, very pretentious position right now. Yeah, there's the classic, you know, um, off the sidewall to mid the NRG like to do. Jacob, wide open and alone. He can pick anywhere to shoot on the net and puts it right over for now. Too much space for energy here. G2 needs to shut that down. This is almost there. Good J naps there to see that one away. Garrett carried out with an air roll. Lachinio's in on target, but again, the crossbar. He's struggling. He wants to take it into that top where, you know, the, the shelf where Mama is not going to be dusting. And there it is. JNAPS finishing through 40 seconds. I don't think this is over for NRG, but G2, they're definitely playing the advantage. Crow again, faking. JNAPS is like, yeah, I see the fake. He goes <laughs> under the ball, pops it up over NRG. And G2 with these fakes. Catching NRG off guard. I like it. They can fake their way until they make it, then that is exactly <laughs> what they need to do here. Lachinio, he's got the center for JNAPS, who's Press gonna there. play this one through. Here's the triangle. Fireburner gets in between it, but Kronovi definitely almost there. A smear pixels behind. Jacob, back for, oh, this is JNAPS. He's gotta make it clear on this one. This is extremely dangerous. Garrett is at the top. That could have spelled disaster. With only 12 seconds left, that's, that's the it. long touch you want. Almost, Kronovi will be denied. Garrett's going to take home the savior medal, but they oh. want to take home a goal into overtime. This is going long. Two seconds. Fire burner. Almost. J naps. But the game's not over until the whatever NRG has sings. And Garrett in. <laughs> Jacob almost. It's so close. And G2 taking us to a game seven. Karma, I, I really didn't know if G2 was going to be able to pull it out here in this series. But this is definitely one that we are absolutely going to have to watch with our nails in front of our face. Get ready to bite them because game seven <laughs> is going to be phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, G2 showing some backbone here, pulling it back, tying it up 3-3. Three, three. They looked really good that series. They had a few fakes and um, a nice few nice passing plays there to put in for their four goals. They certainly weren't gimmies. Uh, so it's nice to see the synergy happening for G2, the, the season one throwback synergy. 
And um, Blatch is looking good here. Even though the scoreboard yeah. at the end here doesn't show it, he was a big part of three of those goals. Um, he was like, he was like the catalyst that set up the play and made the right decision in order to get that goal and uh, that offensive possession happen. There was huge support coming from Lachinio, and it's, you know what? He was the unknown coming into this scenario. It's amazing to see G2 now quickly, not only adapting to NRG's play, but also adapting internally. That is a huge challenge to have to play on two fronts, essentially. We are in game seven of the second best of seven, G2, NRG. If NRG wins this, it is over. If G2 wins this, we are going to a third best of seven. So put on your hype hats and get your sodies out, boys and girls. We've got a very, very exciting matchup here on our hands. Give them some love there. If you're looking for G2, put some G2s in the chat or maybe some hashtag save Rizzo. And if you are here for NRG, drop some NRG love in there because we are getting going. This is everything for them right now and quite a few dollar dues on the line to take home as well. J Naps bailing into the first one. That'll be the first setup here of the game. And also, we didn't talk about it. That is, This is the first game seven of the entire rival week. We've had a lot of amazing matches here, but this is the first one that has actually gone to a game seven in the series. We are we are cooking with gas now, Karma Garrett. Nice stop here <laughs> into the 90. That'll stop it from the corner right now as Jacob has got a good chance here to play forward. He's got a gear G behind him, but Fireburner is actually going to pick up the slack. Lachinio is going to pick up Fireburner in turn. This is G2's chance to strike. Yeah, Jacob, um, I think he's low on boost here in the corner. Energy kind of caught the defense. Somehow, with a little bit of help from Kronovi, jukes out the entire G2 roster. So, uh, Energy looking to kind of put their foot to the floor here. <laughs> foot, foot to the pedal. I'm, I'm Okay. Yeah, I, I needed to... I got lost there. Take over, I'm thinking. <laughs> that was just... Forget that pedal even to happened. Middle, just, pedal please. to the floor. Pedal to the throat of said team. It is <laughs> oh, what is important right now is that this is everything here. Joe Garrett, almost. That will be a denied J Naps. Picking up the pace over here now, and Lachinio's got a chance to carry through on the line. This is very, very close. Then the first goal may be the most important one of the series. And there it is, Jacob, picking up the stray ball at the last second. But this was all about holding on here with the Garrett play and then bouncing it off of the My woodwork. God. I don't think that anyone really expected that to play out exactly that way. Garrett showing his mechanical ability here. He shoots it probably wider than he wanted. Doesn't give up on the play, though. He follows through and is able to tip it mid, which allows Jacob to score and throws off Kenobi in net. Um, another storyline here on Think. Rizzo could be LFT if G2 wins this game. <laughs> Just saying. So Rizzo oh, better goodness. watch out. And I know he's in the Stone Age right now, but things could get a lot worse for him when he comes back. He may not have a team. In a shakeups incoming, folks. We're at the <laughs> half mark right now. NRG, they're looking like they want to take this one home, but G2 is certainly not done yet. But the first goal could be considerably important here. Oh, Jacob, two defenders go up. Once again, we're starting to see we're starting to see the shift back to NRG's kind of individual plays, the ones that were successful against the defense. Um, once again, Garrett's going forward. We're seeing Jacob play those through. Haven't seen a lot from Fireburner yet this game on those. But I have faith that they will certainly rotate him in when it is appropriate because this is already right now a lot more control in terms of possession for NRG than we saw in the last couple games. Even. Yeah, NRG is looking dangerous. There's only two minutes left. If you're G2, you don't want to start taking chances yet, but it's in the back of your mind. You're down one, game seven, two minutes left. NRG is going to be playing defensive in this situation, especially because they're going for the series. They're not going to take super big chances, or at least I don't expect them to. And uh, G2 is going to have to come up with something on their own here. I don't think NRG is going to give them anything free. Four on the wing. This has been for JNAPS, who's been absolutely dominant on offense in this series. Let's see if you can formulate something here for the squad. Lachinio to Kronovi. Back in JNAPS. He's got a second shot. Kronovi's at the top of the box. This is looking potential here, but he's up a little bit too far ahead. And Jacob. Big able dunk. to close out away. This is close, and they are not giving up. The pressure is certainly here for G2. They just need one play to capitalize on right now, and there it is. Oh, oh Jacob. Wow. I, I, you know what? 
we I don't know if we've talked enough. Jacob's already had two saves back there. Um, but he is doing everything he can to keep those off the line. Yeah, that was incredible. Uh, Kronovi made a really nice read off the wall and just left it center. Latch was there. He made a great shot right under the bar, and Jacob just with an incredible save, denies him the opportunity. Oh, double commit. Oh, and that could be dangerous. It's setting up at the top of the box again here. But JNAP's in with Kronovi. That's Latch. Oh, That's an all-in. This could be the overextension here. This could be a security blanket for NRG if they can make the finish. But uh, Kronovi's like, you know what? Let's end that right now. Counter the play and take the demo through. The defense here from NRG has a chance, but they've got to slow this down enough with 15 seconds. All they have to do is hold on with a one-point advantage, and they will take home everything. 10 seconds. Disadvantage here from G2. They don't want to close out this way with five seconds here. Lachinio and Kronovi hit on the Two attack. On this is everything. Can he hold it up? It's going to be a matter uh, of no. Almost. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, NRG will be taking the a two best of sevens now against G2. And we don't go to a third best of seven. That is a very tough way to take out rival week for G2. But NRG and G2 definitely put up this is the series of the week. This was what we wanted to see out of a best of seven with G2 at NRG. There was so much potential here. G2, they set up a lot of positivity with JNAPs. They had Lachinio showing up, which actually, that that variable, that, that huge dynamic change for them, I think that that chemistry actually shook NRG a little bit. I don't think in the first half of this series that they were necessarily ready for what G2 is going to prepare for them. Yeah, it's, it's always hard... As it, I mean, we talked a lot about during the broadcast about how it's hard for the team that is playing with the substitute, but mm -hmm. it is almost as hard for the team playing against the substitute because if they end up figuring it out, it's something that you're not normally prepared for, especially when you scrimmage the we like top teams scrimmage each other offline. They play yeah. uh, series against each other, and they're used to certain styles of how their teams play. When you become mm -hmm. comfortable with how other teams play, and then a sub comes in, it can kind of throw things off a little bit, but. Good on NRG for uh, taking the series despite that and winning PRL Rivalry Week 4. Day 4. Day and, if four. You, and, and if you've been Not here the four. entire week, we, we, you know what? We could switch it up eventually, but Day 4 of Rival Week here has concluded. That'll be NRG taking it home against G2. And a bit of a mishap here from Rizzo, unfortunately, losing power. Lachinio stepping in, though, and making quite the show. I want to give a shout out to these uh before we get going i want to give a shout out to the sponsors but first i want to give all the folks in the chat one more chance to take home something very cool the same way nrg's taking home all that sweet money i'm gonna give the keyword it is ggs ggs everyone ggs G -G. drop them in there you already did it because you were excited about the game good job you're involved in the giveaway as well but don't forget to put a couple more in there just in case can't hurt your odds there while we're waiting for that one, the GGS, to get in the chat, want to remind everyone of all the wonderful sponsors. And of course, to give a shout out here, we talked about Tracker Network. We talked about Turtles, T-R-R-T-L-Z, all them bracelets, about Bad Panda, Victus Gaming. We didn't talk about uh, Cerberus Esports yet, the professional esports organization within Rocket League. They also have teams for Smash, uh, Call of Duty, and a bunch of other games. So don't forget to check them out. They are on Twitter, at Team Cerberus GG. We'll probably get some info for you in the chat. And I want to give a huge shout out to Shift Pro League. They are your community destination for Rocket League tournaments. They've been putting on a lot of great stuff. They'll be putting on some stuff uh, in the next couple months. So don't forget to check them out in their Discord as well as over on Twitter. That is Shift Pro League, SPL. And of course, they'll also, along with PRL, be hosting uh, a qualifier for the RLCS. So getting very excited for that as well. Now, folks, I want to remind all of you to drop GGS in the chat. We'll get some winners here for you. And once again, thank everyone for joining us, all the ones who donated, the viewers, the players, of course, G2 and NRG donating a ton of time to a huge <laughs> marathon. And of course, my wonderful co-caster, Karma, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, you carried the cast, so I appreciate it. Um, and that made me look good. So thank you for making it easy. <laughs> Well, I'm normally just spewing random nonsense. You've brought a lot of structure and control to this. So thank you so much for bringing the pro perspective to a very, very much needed for this game, especially when we're talking about the intricacies of G2 and NRG. It was absolutely phenomenal. So thank you so much, uh, folks. We will be going to a little bit. Uh, what's that? Speak to me, boy, boys in the lab. We will talk about 
that is going to be tomorrow's matchup. And that's going to be Gale Force taking on, I'm going to get the confirmation again. Who is that? Yes. It's going to be, are you excited for Karma? It's oh, going to be, be I'll be here. Gale Force. Chat will I be here. Good. I know Chad will be here. I'll be oh, here. Ch that is Chat a powerhouse is matchup. I mean, you talk about NRG G2 being like the NA kind of rivalry, right? The two oh, yeah. big teams playing against each other. Gale Force, arguably the new number one EU team, depending on who you ask. Envious, mm -hmm. the former world champions, still trying to figure out their roster. Um, two powerhouse teams and two long uh, teams of players who've been playing have a lot of merit in the game. World champions, uh world finalists on either side so that's really going to be a great series is that earlier in the day because of the eu times than it was today it sure is so we'll be putting that one on uh, i'm gonna confirm but i do believe it's a few hours earlier so if you're here on eastern time you want to make sure that you catch all of the action there we on we are on four Eastern, so if you're at work, go ahead and tune it in on your second monitor and hide it from your boss, because you don't want to miss this match. It'll be day five of Rival Week, kicking off tomorrow. Once again, it'll be 4 p.m. Eastern. That is 1 Pacific. And whatever time that is in Europe, wherever you're at, there's like nine time zones to consider. There's nine alone in Russia, actually, so that's even more than that. So, folks, once again, thank you for joining us. Don't miss tomorrow. If you're here now, hit the follow button at the top of the stream so you can get notified when we go live with all the action, we'll be back with a lot more great PRL stuff. Thank you for joining us. This has been Rival Week.